What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I'm your host as always, Evil Eddie, and we got so much to discuss on today's episode. I know it's been a minute since I've been here, but I've had so much going on in my life between relationships. I just got back into EMT school. Matter of fact, got an 84 on my exam today, which I'm really excited for, you know, future moving forward. I was trying to figure out a job along with doing this, even though went to broadcasting school, thought it'd be right to the top from there but no uh once you get into a relationship you realize you gotta be making money and more money than uh you need on your own so time to make some big boy moves i appreciate everybody that stuck by my side through the last couple of months i know i've been saying this a lot lately but uh you know i mean it means a lot to me guys to have this podcast and all the people that have messaged me uh within the MMA scene is unreal. It's absolutely unreal. And not even just listeners, like actual, uh, like big stars, uh, Robin Black, uh, James, uh, just, just big names out there. I'm not gonna throw a bunch of names at you, but it means a lot to see the community supporting one another because when I started, it was really dog eat dog. And don't get me wrong, it still is a dog eat dog out here. But after a while, you kind of, earn your spot so to say let me make sure you earn your you earn your spot and when you're missing for a little bit people start to worry about you so i appreciate everyone that's been reaching out and the one thing that uh brings us all back together is of course mma if there's one thing in this world that people look forward to it's sports and when it comes down to it mma is the best sport that there is even though there's a lot of questionable uh headlines that go out there but uh we all unite every week, and this week, are you guys ready for this week? Do you guys know what's coming up? We have another McGregor fight coming up. Is that is that what's going on? Because it's been one year since Conor McGregor versus Cowboy, and we all made uh, Stephen A. Smith feel a little more than unwanted. So uh, it, it, it kind of boggles my mind. It's been a year. It just shows me how long it's been that I haven't been on my shit. Haven't been grinding the like I told you guys I would. You know, I got all these new sponsors, uh, and I haven't been doing what I'm supposed to be doing for you guys. So let's go back to the start where I would say, guys, thank you for tuning in. Subscribe down below if you're listening to iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Make sure to hit subscribe down below. Also. Uh, I gotta say one thing before we start this, guys. I am just angry at all these headlines that have been coming out that I've been seeing. I just can't make uh, sense with a lot of things that have been going on inside the MMA scene. And I can't wait to discuss between Conor McGregor, between, uh, you know, PFL signing Showtime, between... Uh, there's just there's so many things TJ Dillashaw making his return we're going to be talking about that in just a little bit here uh, Holloway making stunting this weekend uh, we're going to talk about that and much more guys this episode is brought to you by Hero Soap Company and I'll tell you one thing right now it's the only thing I use in my body made by vets for vets and every time you make a purchase they send uh, cleaning product to homeless veterans out there. So it's a big step forward guys use promo code promo code pure evil and or pure vet in the description below promo code pure vet that's p-u-r-e-v-e-t and you get a little discount. Also guys jazz sports is your best choice for all well-rounded sports books. Have you seen all jazz sports dot ag has to offer and before I even read this promo guide I'm gonna jump in this with you. So if there's anyone out there right now that uh, you know, Lake's doing bet and putting dollar five dollars down. Whether you're using you know DraftKings, whatever you're using, I'm gonna do it for our new sponsor, which is Top Affiliate slash Jazz Sports. The links will be down below. With over 20 years experience, this landmark of online sports betting provides action fans with the best odds and player benefits. Interested in low rollover bonuses? Choose between two fantastic premiums with tiny rollover requirements. Watch your favorite games live through their exclusive Jazz TV uh, feature and bet on your game as it unfolds with top of the line live betting odds. So I asked them about this and yeah, you guys can watch UFC fights uh, through this as well. Funding is just as easy as cashing out. Jazz Sports provides you with safe and convenient payment options. 
Mention promo code PUREEVIL and receive 150% free play bonus to start your account. Don't forget, Jazz Sports offers high quality betting lines, true odds, and parlays, same day payouts, and many other unbeatable action perks. Make your move today. Go to jazzsports.ag now and register your new account. Use promo code PUREEVIL, and you can also use promo code HH150, that's H H O N E F I F T Y, and experience online sports betting like never before. I'm going to jump in on that action, guys. And I'm going to do a show before the fight's coming up. So I appreciate our new sponsor, Top Affiliates, uh, along with Jazz Sports. So, guys, can you believe? Let's jump into the show. Let's jump into this damn thing. Can you believe it has been an entire year since the McGregor versus Cowboy fight? Because I'm, I'm still trying to get over his return. A lot of people out there didn't think it was real that Cowboy took a dig, this and that. Come on. We've been watching sports for too long. I know that we enjoy it, you know, saying things like that. But what disrespect that was for Stephen A. Smith to go out there and say what he said about Cowboy. I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. And I just want to play this clip for you all uh, to kind of remind you of how ridiculous Stephen A. Smith was. We haven't really seen much of him <laughs> as of late, but James McSweeney, tore into <laughs> tore into Stephen A. Smith. Let me pull that up for you guys. But what is your opinion on the McGregor return? Are you guys as excited? Because back in the day, I used to be I used to bend over backwards for Conor McGregor fights. It used to excite me like no other fights could. And you, even if you don't like Conor McGregor, you have to say you have to say you usually get excited about his fights. I haven't been feeling that. Is Conor McGregor still in his prime? A lot of people are wondering. Uh, we're looking back at his last couple of fights, which is, yeah. you know, you can't take much from the boxing thing. But what Conor's going forward saying is that he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao. Get out of my face with that. Who here wants to see Conor McGregor versus Manny Pacquiao? I said this on the radio after uh, McGregor Mayweather. If you want to see Conor McGregor do his thing, you want to see him inside the octagon. Now with Jake Paul, Logan Paul, and all this, uh, nonsense that's been going ab about. I'm not about that either. I'm not about that either, but I've been listening to what you guys have been saying. And I will agree for the, for the most part, it's good for all sports. It's good for all parties. It's hard to watch these videos that Logan or Jake, I think it's Jake, not Logan, but Jake has been putting out there, uh, being extremely disrespectful but then I see you guys saying, you know, Connor does the same thing. Uh, this fighter does the same thing. It's a little different when you're fighting uh, retired basketball uh, players and knocking them out and thinking you're ready for the best of the best. Logan Paul trying to fight Connor McGregor, and people are believing it. People are giving him a chance. People are giving them both a chance to fight Mayweather and McGregor, and it just boggles my mind because I'll sit there thinking about it too, and I'll go, oh, well, maybe I could see, but... Guys, we've seen this all before. How many amazing fighters that have put in, you know, years of kickbox. Look what we did to Israel Adesanya. You know, he came in, uh, had, what, 100 kickboxing fights. Comes into the UFC. He's not ready. He's not ready. He's not going to do well. Climbs his way up the ladder. We still didn't believe it until he won the title. Now we're looking at Jake Paul and Logan Paul and being like, oh, uh, they can do it. Get out of my face. Here is what, uh, going back a year, this is how far we come from a year. Stephen A. Smith being the MMA Village idiot from my prior co-host, James McSweeney. And now we're in the YouTube era. Like, guys, this is getting crazy. All right, here's what, uh, here's what we had to say. Right? Like, I know my length. And that's why I love doing the podcast with you because it allows access from my view and your view. And then, you know, seeing what we see on social media and seeing what the fighters say, it brings everything together. But when you see somebody like Anthony Smith, who hasn't covered UFC, hasn't watched UFC events before, to have it taken it, and for you to think that it's doing us a favor to have him on there that's going to bring eyes, it's not the truth. No, of course it's not the truth. You're thinking like... What, what happened to the UFC before he came along? Oh, it was a multi-billion dollar company that was sold. So, I mean, 
What's he talking about? Why, why would you even say something so stupid? I mean, the fact is, silly comments from silly people are always going to be out there. You can never, you know, listen, go to any village. Right? I'm from a small, a small town outside London. Every village has an idiot. <laughs> and, and, you know what I mean? I, you, you can always find him when you're lost. You drive into town and you're lost. And you think, oh, this is a nice little village. And you think, excuse me, you pull over, ask him where to go. And you go, excuse me, do you know how to get to such and such? And you know who it is? It's the fucking village idiot. <laughs> and, he, and he says something so stupid to you, like, oh, no, no, yeah, turn left, turn right. I don't know, I'm lost too. You know? And that's Anthony Smith, ain't it? He's just a village idiot, isn't he? Yes, Steve, 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 Steve Smith, what the fuck is name on? On this whole situation, it, it's just, you know, we have so many people, like fighters. I like seeing the fighter get the job. We don't need somebody, like, that, that, that's going to throw it in there. That yeah, but the thing is, it's just unprofessional. And the fact of the matter is, whether you feel that or you don't, right? Whether you're qualified for that opinion or you don't, at the end of the day, two of the very best, two of the very best fighters in the world, right, got in there, put it on the line for everyone's entertainment. That's that's what fighters do, right? And, 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 and you, what I'm saying is, right, you, what, if you look up a definition of a fight, a definition of a fight is two people having a fight to find out who the winner is. Right now, to, to 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 find out who the winner is, the people that fight must be in roughly the same realm, as in same level, same weight, same level. Right now, if that happens twenty times, maybe what happened only happened once, or maybe it didn't happen the whole twenty. But that's the nature of a fight. That's why people love to watch fights, because you never know who's going to win or how they're going to win or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, Donald's been on the other end of that spectrum over 50-odd times in his career, where he's destroyed and walked through them. So, you know, I sat down with Manny Pacquiao in his office, in his house, in, in, in General Santos, after, after he got beat by Marquez the fourth time, the fourth fight, he got knocked out. And I said to him, Manny, come on, I want to ask you something. And he said, yeah. And I said, to be honest, I, I hope it's not too much. I said, but when you fought Marquez, you had three wars. On the fourth one, when you got knocked out, I thought you died. Like, you got, you was out bad. How do you come back and fight Mayweather? That was a big thing that even his coaches discussed as well. How do you come back and perform with self-belief? And he just looked, and he looked at me for like, I don't know, 10 seconds? It seemed like a fucking minute, but it was just 10 seconds, I guess. And he went, if you don't want to lose, don't fight. That said, and he went, before, in, and, he went it's, and he went, it's not personal. It's just a fight. I don't. And that's where we are right now with Conor McGregor. You know, he's making all this money. Where is his head at? We want to see the motivated Conor McGregor return, right? That's what we all want to see. That's what we're all hoping for. That's what we want to see in his last fight. That's what we want to see versus Habib. We're all worried that he was getting his head stuck too far into the bo into boxing. But look what that did for boxing. L looking back, look what that did. McGregor Mayweather, it brought a lot of new eyes to it. Now we have Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Mike Tyson. It, my mind's about to explode. 2020 was nuts. 2021, this is what we have in store. Conor McGregor, even if he loses this fight, still going to be interested. I, that, that's, that's the issue I'm having right now. That last fight that we had, it's been a year. You know, the, the Cowboy... First, it's it's been a year. What Conor McGregor are we getting this time? Because there was nothing more exciting than watching his rise to fame, uh, the post fight interviews, the octagon interviews, the the champ champ, uh, the Eddie Alvarez fight, the Aldo build up, the Mendez. Like, come on, just all of it was just so amazing. I'm not really finding myself uh, counting down the minutes to see Dustin the Diamond 
versus Connor too. The buildup for that first one was perfect. Leave it at that. There are, there are other fighters I'd rather see Connor fight. And I feel that's the issue right now is, you know, how motivated can a fighter be to train and get ready for a fight he's already won? Could it get better than the last fight that he had against the Diamond? Because that, that's so long ago. Diamond's improved. He's not going to go in there and throw blow for blow with you and bite down and get himself in a bad situation. Conor McGregor, it, it, it's hard because I'm not the guy to break this kind of stuff down. But just from the mental aspect of it, with everything going on in his life, is he fully there like he was during that rise? Or is he content? You know, if, if you didn't need to wake up and go to work every day and then you know, something cool comes along, like, hey, do you want to come and work? You know, I know you don't need the money, but, you know, it will be a fun day. We have this and that planned. I know you've already been in for one of these, uh, you know, little at-work uh, shindigs, but c come on back. What would get you out of bed? Is this really getting Connor out of bed? Does Connor really want to fight? Because it seems like he's taking the fight in preparations to fight Manny Pacquiao. How does, what is going on? is the question. So let me know what you guys think, what your picks are as well. Uh, later this week, I'll be going through mine. Uh, other fight news. TJ Dillashaw needs a win before he fights for the title, according to Frankie Edgar, which I 100% agree. TJ Dillashaw, the way he went out was embarrassing. And the way that he became the snake in the grass, right? As Connor said on Ultimate Fighter Season 22, he, he was such a big star. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there that didn't like him on The Ultimate Fighter. I have so many of my friends that used to love TJ Dillashaw, would be on board with TJ. And then a couple years ago, leaving Team Alpha Male, uh, Team Alpha Male crumbled. I mean, look, bringing up all these things is just like, I don't know what to think about the entire MMA scene. We had so many amazing gyms going, and it seems like a lot of them fell to shit. Um... You want a, a title fight as you return after you just got busted for PEDs? Had to relinquish your title? Now, there's the thing. He had to give up his title. It wasn't necessarily stripped from him. They gave him the option, that's what I'm guessing, to you know give, give the belt up and not be embarrassed about it. You got to earn your way back. You got to have one fight that we're like, oh, yeah, okay. It's still TJ. It wasn't the performance-enhancing drugs. It was TJ. We need to see that before we're like, yeah, kid, come on back. We, it was just a misunderstanding. We know that you would never do that, this and that. You can't do that. You can't do that unless you went out for other reasons. Um, what's, what's, a, what's another reason for a fighter to come back to claim his title? You know, uh, Dominic Cruz versus TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw making his rise, defending the title. This is not the Burrell fights. Uh, you know, he makes his return. Goes all five rounds, TJ and Dominic. Dominic returned after, what, two years layoff? Three years layoff? Two years layoff? And earned his title back. He didn't leave under dark circumstances like TJ uh, unfortunately did. So I definitely agree with Frankie Edgar. He's got to earn his way back. And I doubt TJ uh, would argue against it if it was any other fighter in that position. I'm sure TJ would say, dude, you need to fight your way back up as well. Uh, Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou 2 planned for UFC 260. So a couple, uh, three, three pay-per-views away. Not really excited about that one unless you are interested in seeing how far along uh, Francis's wrestling has come. Which I'm tuning into this fight to see a knockout. Every time I see Francis stepping into the octagon, I want a knockout. The first time he had everyone and their mother believing that he was going to be the next big star. I believed it too. The UFC needed Francis Ngannou to beat Stipe. You know, I love Stipe. A lot of you guys love Stipe and what he represents, who he is as a fighter. And uh, as Modelo would say, you know, but this is his big spot to shine. Is he ready to take on champion? Is he able to, you know, take on fighters like Stipe. Well, we're going to see. Just not as excited. I was at the edge of my seat. Didn't think Stipe had a chance in that very first fight. And wow, man, even the shots that he had to take through that entire fight had me at my seat. So I will be excited for that aspect of it, but I'm not really that excited to see it again. Uh, I don't think Stipe could dominate any more than he could, but it only takes one shot. And that's what... uh 
that's what scares me, and that's what makes Francis Ngannou somebody the UFC would want as the champion. Because if you bring a monster like that, and Francis is a specimen, he's a freaking specimen. You bring a monster like that, and you train him uh, to go through adversities like fighting Stipe and falling back and being lost for a second, but then putting his foot down, stepping back in there, making all the adjustments he needs. Here's the final test. Did he... Is he going to pass? Is he going to be the big star? Because listen, if, if Stipe does the same thing and shuts out Francis... It's going to be a very hard road to get back for Francis. He'll, he'll take out everybody. It's kind of like the Rumble DC thing, right? It's kind of like the DC or John Jones DC thing. He'll beat everybody in the division except that one fighter. That's what this might be. This might be the Uriah Faber Dominic Cruz. This, this might be just that. I'm going to tell you right now, I love Stipe, but I want Francis to win because we want the UFC machine you know not just for our entertainment but to grow you want somebody like francis Ngannou knocking dudes out you want dana white sitting there saying he he hits harder than you know three mac trucks or whatever the hell he was saying in front of stipe and you know francis learned a lot during that he learned not to believe all the hype the yes men this comes to every fighter that gets that spotlight we see them fall back, live, believe the lies. Well, not necessarily lies, but uh, take a step back with, I don't know if, if it's self-control or uh, commitment, determination. I don't know what it is because we've seen it happen time and time again and fighters fall. They believe it. This is a big test for uh, for Francis. I want to know what you guys have to say about it. Let me know down below or on Twitter at evil under dash echo. That's E-V-I-L underscore E-C-C-O. And with heavyweights on our mind, John Jones wants the heavyweight fight. And this is nothing new. We remember him calling out Brock Lesnar after beating DC for the second time with that head kick knockout. Beautiful. Executed the knockout and the post-fight speech afterwards better than anybody. Calls out Brock Lesnar. Says, you want to know what it's like to have your ass kicked by a man half your size? Step and knock down with me. Scary, you know, his coach even said, you know, this, this is a scary situation. It interests me, though. I don't want to see him fight Francis. That's the one fight I don't want to see him fight. Uh, heavyweight, I am interested in seeing what he can do, but we've seen fighters go to heavyweight. Look at Gustafson moving up to heavyweight. Look at, uh, who do we recently just see move, try to move up to heavyweight and got knocked out? Or even, you know, Luke Rockhold uh, moving up. To light heavyweight doesn't work out for a lot of fighters but here's the thing john jones is different it's kind of like the conor mcgregor aspect where he, he beats jose aldo he, he runs through everyone in that division we want to see him move up i know you want to see him defend the title but it's more interesting to see him move up how far can he push this right how far can one person it's, it's like hunter s thompson at the beginning of fear and loathing you know a, a, a drug addict Likes to take things as far as he can go until there's nothing left. How far can I take this? I, At this point in John Jones' career, let's do it. Let's freaking do it. Let's see him go in there. If, if he's beating this guy, that guy, I don't want to see him do it over again like Conor McGregor, like like Francis uh, and Stipe. Let, let's move him up. And fear is not a bad thing, guys. Fear is a good thing. That's what will make me tune in. The fear of it, right? That's what made us tune in to watch Stipe versus Francis won. The fear of it. That's what made us tune in to watch, uh, you know, Francis versus, uh, not Francis, but uh, John Jones versus DC too. It was simple, right? The fear of seeing DC lose again when he had so many things going for him. Let me know what you guys think about John Jones uh, and his transformation as he moves up to heavyweight for his debut. Paul Felder saying, I would absolutely take a fight against legend Nate Diaz. I feel like we talk about this way too much. Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz, this fighter wants to fight him. They're coming back. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Oh, the fight's set up. Oh, well, now it's canceled. I never, the one thing, if you're a new MMA fan, learn this. And learn this quick. When it comes to any Diaz brother, don't get too excited. Don't jump the gun, even if it's announced. 
you know, you might be GSP waiting f uh, at the presser. So, uh, it, it's it's just absolutely insane what's been going on. Just looking through everything right now. Here's what Dana White had to say because, uh, you know, we all want to die to see um, this upcoming fight with Habib versus name that person, right? Is Habib going to come back? I think he left the perfect way. If you're going to do it, do it big. Say, no one's going to stunt on me unless he moves up. or Even the Conor McGregor fight. Don't want to see it. I think Conor loses again. He fights anybody. They're going to lose. Leave on this note. Leave as the untouchable. But how hard is that for fighters? When a fighter says they're retiring, what do we always say? Bullshit. Bullshit. And then they end up staying in there for too long and they end up having to make a deal with PFL or BKFC, which is not a bad thing for a lot of fighters. It's actually a good thing. To have a fight career after the UFC is very hard. A lot of fighters say it's easier to make it to the UFC. It's even harder to get back to the UFC. And with a lot of these old guys, it's nice seeing, you know, see somebody like Showtime Pettis. I, I felt like I was on the fence with it. I, w I was happy for him. And I was like, is, are people really going to even care to tune in? for? Well, I am. I'll be tuning in to watch them. Uh, but between that and Bellator, it's hard. Once you get kicked from the UFC, it's really hard to, uh, at least in my opinion. And I've said this before in the past, and people have argued with me, saying that's not true at all. Look at these other promotions like like one championships. Uh, you know, there are avenues to go. But uh, when, it, when it comes down to Habib, I think he left the perfect way. How long can you stay in there? How many young guys are going to come up trying to make a name off of you? I will make a prediction that Habib comes back for two more fights. He's still a young guy. He's still really young. And we know time off doesn't affect him, right? We've, we've seen what he's been able to do with, with time off. You know, even that one fight that he had against, uh, what the hell was his name, upon his return after two years, where he, he did have a very difficult time. Oh, what the hell was his opponent's name? It's Derek, uh, Darren... Powell? Oh, I can't remember. But mark my words, Habib versus GSP is not going to happen. I don't want to see that for GSP. I think GSP will lose that fight. Habib's going to come back. He has to fight Tony. No matter what you say, guys, Tony's here in this, in this part of his career. He, he's not the same guy. Don't stop. Haven't we learned, guys? Why do we repeat all these? Why do we have to repeat all of this? Don't judge a fighter off of their last fight, their last two performances. We've seen how many fighters come back and get right back. Look at Bisbing. Bisbing's the prime example. No one ever thought he would get to where he, he ended up. Don't ever doubt a fighter. You're doubting a fighter. You're not doubting somebody who gives it. You're doubting a fighter. This is good. Doubt Tony all you want. Tell him that, you know, you're washed up. You're not going to ever hold that title. The title that you held was bullshit. Say whatever you want motivate him maybe that's what he needs right now tony's a strange guy but man i don't think it's the end for tony you know we see this a lot as well somebody beats a fighter like tony who had what 12 fight win streak at one point loses and now his opponent gets all the credit in the world even people who didn't give a damn about the opponent before now does like, I swear, this is the same podcast I did a year ago and the year before that. And the, it's the same cycle of shit that keeps happening. We know better. We know better. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you're excited. Uh, that does it. I got to go to work at 6 a.m., which I got work in six hours because I'm recording this at midnight right now, like a stoon odd. So, guys, subscribe down below. This is a new episode of Pure Evil MMA. I know it was short, but this is not the episode. I got interview Wednesday with two surprise guests, and we're going to have... One hell of a show. I have some uh, special things set up as well. And a giveaway. Don't want to miss the giveaway. The episode is brought to you by Top Affiliate. This episode is brought to you by Hero Soap Company. And yours truly, Evil Eddie. Guys, I'm happy to be back. Subscribe down below. Pure Evil MMA on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Get at it. Remember, without evil, there's no purity. White knuckles to the end. Behave yourselves.